It, uh, hello. Greetings. Greetings. How are you? I am well. Nice to meet you. And who are you? I am Max. One moment, please. All right. Adjustments must be made. All right. That is better. All right. So um, I'm, I, I think that's the first time I speak to insectoids. Would you like to describe yourself? In what way? Do my, um, what I look like? That would be good, too. I look like some of the insects on your planet, but I stand on my feet. Mm -hmm. We are upright and not horizontal. Mm -hmm. We are evolved from mm -hmm. lower insect species. Mm -hmm. We are hybrid of many insect species. Mm -hmm. We are larger mm -hmm. because of our planet's gravitational pull mm -hmm. is lighter, but also the way that things worked on our planet was it was very positive for insect growth uh -huh. and life. And so there are more than one insect species with sentience and intelligence. Uh -huh. I look like It is hard to describe, but I look like, I guess, close to a beetle. Uh huh. But I stand upright. So you have upper and lower hands? Yes. Uh, I am about four foot five inches tall by your standards. So. What do you use the upper hands for and what do you use lower hands for? The same as you. We use them for building, for researching, uh -huh. for manipulating items. Uh -huh. So I'm very interested in, uh, in the idea of the hive mind. We are going close to developing telepathy. I mean, I don't know how close, but we are thinking about de developing a telepathy. So uh, I wonder, you know, how does it, do you have like a hive mind? What do you do with it? A hive mind, did that yeah. you say? Yeah, hive there mind. There are some species that have hive minds, but we are individuals. Oh, wow. But Other species may have a hive mind, which means that they are connected in some way telepathically. They instinctively know what the others are doing. Mm -hmm. The energies between them are attached and connected, mm -hmm. and they, they are able to know each other's direction and function. And so therefore, that is not like my mind. Richard Feynman experimented with um, our um, insect, insects, like mostly ants. And uh, he found that individuals are not very smart and not very logical and not very coordinated. But as a group, they do a very sophisticated work which individuals don't. So they have a uh, of thinking of the higher higher level. I just right. wonder, is it is it the idea of the hive mind that you know collectively they are smarter than individuals? The hive mind is collectively smarter. Yes, for it, I believe the queen of the hive gives the direction. Oh. 
I don't think so. I think uh, when he studied, there was no queens. It was only only uh, worker ants, and uh, and just when there is a certain amount of them, they start behaving like smarter. Like there is some sort of collective mass, critical mass, after which they become smarter without even a queen. The thing is, when they are born, they are given directions. Okay. This is how the queen controls it. Each one has its own particular thing that it must do. And that mm -hmm. is born into them. Uh-huh. But, you know, is there like an immediate telepathic control by the queen? Or is it more like um, they're locally connected telepathically? Yeah? They're locally telepathic. Uh-huh. To another. But when... It, they are in a group, and there is something that must be done. They all know their positions and what they must do as an individual. It is not that they are free thinking, but they do have internally a job that they must do, and it will be done. And as a whole, they, they work as a machine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you don't have any of that? No, I do not. I am not part of the hive mind. I see. Like, um, you know, the humans are pretty um, foolish collectively. You know, individually I see a lot of smart people, but, you know, as soon as it is a group more than three, uh, collectively they become much less smart. That is because they are taught to individualize and do things the way they are, that would please themselves and not the group. So what's the involvement of uh, insectoids into the human history? Is there like, um, um, like any historical involvement? We have been there many times. Mm -hmm. Our DNA is not truly part of yours. It cannot mm -hmm. be. We are not able to be part of your DNA. We are not humanoid in any way, mm -hmm. as you would see it. So our functions and our DNA do not fit with yours. So mm -hmm. we are not part of your seeding. Uh-huh. At least not our species. Uh-huh. So do you think um, uh, the, uh, the scarab was uh, a symbol of, um, of ascension, I would say, re uh, rebirth and ascension? Was there like a, a reason for that? Was there like an insect, uh, 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 a, con a conscious insect, insect species which would uh, contribute at that time? They were using the scarab as a symbol. Mm -hmm. The dung beetle was there, was a beetle that created a round sphere out of the sand and dung. And they were looking at this as it has the ability to create. And therefore, it was a, a symbol of positivity and a symbol that showed that they could be part of some kind of evolutionary trail. Mm -hmm. I do not know how to speak it any better than that. I just wonder if there was a, a, a species of insects which would uh, there were, co yeah. communicate with humans in the past and contribute to our history. Contributing to the history, yes. We have taught them about some of the herbs and chemicals. For we use different herbs and chemicals for ourselves. But we saw that humans could take advantage of some of that. And therefore, mm -hmm. we had taught them a little bit about that. Especially in your Anastasi 
people. We look like ants at times. Mm -hmm. They thought we looked like ants. We do not mm -hmm. feel that we do, but we have been with them. And the word Hopi does mean ant people. Oh, wow. Wow. So, yes, we were there in your southwest a few times with the Anastasi people. They were very welcoming to us, and we taught them many things. How to burrow into the sides of the mountains and how to take care of making a home out of dirt. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm actually the Southwest. Am I? I'm in yes. San Diego. Is there like a history of um, insects, like uh, conscious insects here? We went as far as Nevada in your area. Uh -huh. Our main place was in New Mexico. Uh -huh. We had a lot of places there that we worked with because we liked the soil in that area. And so what's the role? Oh, wait. Yes. Go ahead. Please continue. We liked how the soil was. It reminded us of our own home soil. And so we were able to help in a better way in those areas where we felt familiar. Uh-huh. Um, what's the role of insects in the galaxy? What is what? What is the role of insectoids in the galaxy? We have our own role. We have our own thought processes. And we help our own usually we do not help humanoid species they are not very welcoming to us however we do welcome others we work with other insectoids with other non-humanoid species seem to be more welcoming I would assume you would, like, I would guess you would be friendly with reptilians. Is it right? Yes. The reptilians are friendly with us. How and about... The mantis people. Uh -huh. And all non-humanoids. Even the tree people. The uh -huh. snail people. What you would call them. They are all friendlier toward us than humanoid beings will seem to be a threat to them, but we have learned to get along with galactic councils and things of this nature. Although we are not treated warmly, we are treated with respect. Uh-huh. What kind of difference is there? Like, how do you differ in your way of um, living in the galaxy from others? What's your unique role? Our unique role is that we understand the soil better than anyone and understand minerals and what is in the soil and what grows from the soil better than most humanoid species mm -hmm. and most other species. We mm -hmm. our understanding of soils and different things of that nature is very advanced. We are able to grow anything on any planet. Are you related to butterflies too? Like in general, insectoids and butterflies, I think are similar, right? In many ways. 
there are similarities, but we do not metamorphosize our being is stays in a stable condition. Mm -hmm. It looks like a butterfly is a, a hybrid between uh, an insect and um, some sort of a snail or something. It is possible. We have discovered other species that do go through a mm -hmm. metamorphosis and change mm -hmm. into different kinds of beings, if you will. Mm -hmm. They are rare, but they are existing. Mm -hmm. So is, a, is flying uh, part of your um, interests? We have in the past been flying creatures. Uh -huh. The waves have evolved into smaller portions, so flying is not an available as one of our capacities mm -hmm. at this time. However, we do create ships and understand how to fly. Um, do your ships look in any different way? Can we recognize them in the sky? They are usually longer and I, what is the word? Oblong and they look like a stick, but rounded. Got it. Um, how good you, are you in telepathy? Telepathy is part of who we are. We mm -hmm. can send messages telepathically one to another. It is part of the evolution of insects that we have always had a certain form of telepathy. It just has evolved into more of a language than a... Uh, it was originally just used for safety and warnings one to another. Mm -hmm. but we have developed it into a language mm -hmm. and we have a spoken language that is sometimes used as well but mm -hmm. telepathy is our major form of trans communication mm -hmm. the is reason your brain the reason for the language is for personal use mm -hmm. or more intimate conversation. Go ahead. Uh, are you thinking with your brain in the, in the head or is there like uh, other parts of your body which uh, help in thinking? Yes, the brain is part of a system of thought processes that where you would have a spine, our thought processes move down the back, down mm -hmm. from our back, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a history of uh, a story of a researcher who was using the patterns from insects, um, insect wings some sort of a 3D structure, repetitive 3D structure, fractal structure in the 3D wings for anti-gravity um, uh, flying device. And it was a pretty small device, like of the size of the small scooter. And he was able to fly using, uh, using some sort of patterns, nanotech patterns or macrotech patterns. Um, so I just wonder if you have that. We do have ways to defy gravity because being that we originally flew, we had wings, we understood the aerodynamics of it 
and mm -hmm. also understood um, how to reproduce this kind of activity to move away from the ground without using propulsion, but mm -hmm. yet you having natural abilities and natural senses that were actually part of our being that is anti-gravity accessible. So you're flying without the additional technology, you can just uh, levitate. Correct. Uh-huh. That's amazing. It um, is something that you must use a lot of energy for, but it is can be used in practical situations. Mm -hmm. So when you are friends with humans, uh, what is the way of communication with them? We use this form of communication for our language is not understood by your people, but translators will bring at least close interpretation to what we have to say. Right. So um, are you cross-incarnating with humans like other, or do you have like incarnations of humans and insects and vice versa? There has been, yes. That is something from the Oversoul. It is actually not part of a reality that we can control. Is it frequent? I do not know how frequent it is. There are many humanoid species and we do want to experience them in some way, but it is formulated in the afterlife how this is done. Mm -hmm. We do not believe in retrieving our past lives oh. as you do. The current life is all that matters. Oh, I see. We are no. living in the present. Past lives would only tend to confuse the information that we are trying to deal with in the present. Are you afraid of death? Death. No. Uh huh. We experience death, yes, but we are not afraid of it. Are you? Uh, I am not. Mm -hmm. Are you involved in, uh, like, as a species, are you involved in wars? We have been involved in hostile activities, mm -hmm. sometimes by our own doing, but other times just defending ourselves. Mm -hmm. What's your way of government? There are those that rule. Uh -huh. and have decisive abilities. We are fair with one another, and if the fairness comes into question, then we must go to the elders, uh -huh. those that understand and have lived long periods and experienced many things. Um, do you have an idea of expansion and uh, po populating other planets, creating yes. other worlds? Mm -hmm. We have done this. We have come to many places. We have three of our own worlds. Mm -hmm. 
They are not in this galaxy. Oh. Mm -hmm. This galaxy, we have places where we could live, but they are already populated. So mm -hmm. we would not impose on those populations. So which of the insectoid species would be closest to the humanity historically? Closest to being human or closest to humans? Uh, close to the uh, human history on Earth. Perhaps the ant species is the closest. You mean the Earth, the small ants on Earth or like uh, other like a special uh, intelligent uh, uh, ants elsewhere? Intelligent ants elsewhere have been on your planet many times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have been there, but mm -hmm. we have not been as involved as they have. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Just a second. Oh yeah, I have a personal request. Uh, there is many bugs in my current life, many insects, and uh, I just wonder if you can talk to them and ask them to leave my house. We have uh, fleas on the dogs, and we have bed bugs. And I'm, I'm wondering why is it happening? One moment, please. What are, we are not familiar with these species. Uh -huh. They are non-communicative. Uh -huh. But moment, as we send energy to them, which they may or may not understand, but they will understand that it is insectoid energy, mm -hmm. but they may not understand our language or our meaning. I see. One moment, please. Information has been sent. Oh, thank you. We wish you good luck with this information that it might help. Uh, thank you. For the closing, would you mind sharing some poetry or, um, or prayer or uh, some sort of uh, literary piece? Would you like it in your language or ours? Um, yeah, I guess a sample of your language with the translation would be great. All right. One moment while I prepare. We Thank are you. not used to preparing such things for these kinds of communications. One moment, please. All right. Next. That is a sample of our language. Excellent, thank you. The interpretation would be this, roughly. I cannot give it to you exactly. Uh -huh. We take of the earth, 
and make of the earth the things that are great for us, leaving the space there also forms enclosure for other species so they may find warmth and comfort. And we have used what was there for our own benevolence in the sense that we have taken from the earth that positive thing which was needed for our sustenance and have taken from the earth that which is ours. Thank you. We use earth in substitute for other words. It is the only mm -hmm. one that would fit into that space. We do uh, not call our planet earth, but the word would not have made any sense to you. All right. Are you in, uh, have you been in connection with dwarves? Dwarves. Other species of dwarves, yes, not your dwarves. Mm -hmm. I just wonder, they, they also are in the, of, of the earth, so maybe there is a, uh, an interesting connection between you two. We are not from your earth, but they are. I mean... Dwarfs and insects both work with the ground, the element of uh, dirt. So yes. I, want, I wonder if there is uh, some interaction between you two closer than we expected. They are not in our realm. Oh. We do not communicate freely with them, mm -hmm. but they are in existence, and we understand this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we do not communicate directly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are you um, closely associated with the, with the element of money, with the money and finances? We do not use finances. Mm -hmm. We have societies that help one another with things and mm -hmm. are more communal in that way. We do have mm -hmm. individual minds. Mm -hmm. However, our communities are very close. Uh huh. Do you have like family life? A what? Family life. Yes. Mm -hmm. Family I... life is community life. Uh huh. How many genders do you have? Two genders. I see. I see. Thank you very much. I think this is um, all I needed to know at the moment. And um, I thank you for coming. Um, do you have a name for your species? Torret. Torret. Uh, do you, can you share the name for yourself? My name? As, as individual, yes. Tetra. Tetra. Thank you for uh, coming. And I would like to invite... Uh, Dwarves to speak if they if they are available. Dwarves. Uh huh. We will leave you for now. Thank you. It Thank has you for been an interesting interaction. Thank you for coming. You are welcome. I believe is the correct. Word.